before God, God's witness, the preacher, and your community of fellow inhabitants, thus keeping the rights to your children. Without the marriage license, there's no legal authority CPS can take your children without honoring your Fifth Amendment right to due process to be heard. You can't take somebody's property without they're, they're having an opportunity to defend their rights. Or at least you're noticed that the fact that you have an opportunity to defend. But CPS doesn't notice you. They just come and take your children, and then you can argue about the taking later. That's not, uh, that's not constitutional. So let's uh, read this court case site from the Supreme Court. You know, here it is shown as number 27. It is one thing to find that the tribe has agreed to sell the right to use the land and to take valuable minerals from it, and it's another to find that the tribe has abandoned its sovereign powers simply because it has not reserved them through a contract. To presume that a sovereign forever waives the right to exercise one of its powers unless it expressly reserves the right or to exercise that power in a commercial agreement turns the concept of sovereignty on its head. Marion et al. doing business as Marion and Baitless et al. versus the Jicarilla Apache tribe. And this is 455 U.S. 130, a Supreme Court decision. Now, what's interesting here is what they're stating is, is that, is that um, you'd you, if you don't reserve your rights, They'd like you to believe that you've lost your rights, which is not true at all. So let's say you, that, you know, that you enter into the marriage contract and they'd like you to believe that you gave up your rights because you didn't reserve them. However, more realistically, if you state I'm sovereign and therefore I did not give up any rights, then what are they going to say? You know, well, you're not sovereign because you're a 14th Amendment citizen. Anyway, if I'm sovereign, I'm one of the people, and I'm not a 14th Amendment citizen of the United States, even though I did not reserve my rights, I cannot lose them forevermore. If you hadn't noticed, no one has any United States constitutional rights in court anymore. Would you like to get them back? I believe you can. First, file an affidavit of truth stating your right to claim sovereignty and renounce any presumption that you are a 14th Amendment citizen of the United States because it's a voluntary position. I mean, you can choose to uh, go back to being a citizen, one of the people, anytime you want, can't you? Since it's voluntary. <laughs> and establish that you are not the ends legis legal fiction John Doe in all capital letters that appears on every government letter you receive and from every licensed corporation such as PG&E, AT&T, DMV, bank statements, IRS, etc. They will never address you correctly using your living soul upper and lowercase name, John H. Doe. Want proof that you are the authorized representative of the trust, John Doe? Look with a high-powered magnifying glass at the signature line on your bank check. It is microprint, and it says, quote, authorized signature only, over and over, and it is not a line at all. Now, if you have really good vision, my vision is horrible. A lot, some people can actually almost make it out with the naked eye. Your account is John H. Doe, and you sign as the authorized signature because a legal fiction can't sign. It's, an, it's a trust. It's an estate created by the government, basically, so that they can work on you, uh, unknown to you, right? But a legal fiction can't sign because they don't have hands. They don't have a mind. They don't have eyes to see. The state of California is a dead piece of paper sitting on a table, and it can't order you to do anything. It's just a piece of paper. It's something that exists in the imagination. How can a piece of paper or an idea physically affect you? 
but the fiction can order through its agents another legal fiction to do something. This is, what, this is one reason why all court documents, tax bills, property tax bills, phone bills, etc., come to the fiction, the all capital John Doe, and not to you. Next, the Constitution does not apply to me. Whoa. <laughs> I didn't sign it. I'm not a party to the contract trust. But I can be if I choose to be. The judge, the government agents, all took an oath as trustee to execute the trust, and it is waiting for my agreement to become a binding contract to honor my rights. Look at the oaths and bonds. I go to the county clerk's office, office and get a certified copy of the DA's oath and the sheriff's oath and the chief of police's oath and the judge's oath and write, quote, for your service to the community, I accept your oath of office as a binding bilateral contract and sign it without prejudice by John Doe as authorized representative of John Doe in all capitals. Now we, i.e. the oath pledger, that would be the sheriff, let's say, and I are in contract to honor the constitutions, U.S. and California in this case. This along with the truth affidavit will secure my rights in court in addition, well, It'll secure my rights in court when I um, accept the judge's oath and the clerk of the court's oath. In addition, I break any presumptions the court has about my status, of which they have plenty. By stating when my name is called, I'm here on that matter, I don't give my name, as the authorized representative of the all capital name John Doe, the defendant. I'm one of the people of the Republic of California, and this indicates my sovereign status, as we have seen above. In this court of record indicates a common law status, see above, by special appearance to challenge jurisdiction only, and will cross the bar retaining all my unalienable rights and waiving none by your consent, judge, and wait for consent before crossing into the admiralty equity jurisdiction, which is representative by the gold-fringed military flag flying on the walls, indicating the form of law being practiced in that court. If you think you have rights and that you're uh, innocent until proven guilty, wrong, you're not. In a military court, you're guilty until you prove your innocence because the, the person accusing you is your captain or some superior officer. Superior officers don't lie. They're men of honor. Men of honor don't lie. So it's adjudged that you are guilty and you have to prove that you're not. If the judge refuses to consent, I ask again and after the third time of non-consent, I state the judge is intentionally denying my unalienable rights. Think about it. I, all I'm asking is for my unalienable rights before I cross into your fictional courtroom. So if you're going to deny me my rights, that's pretty serious. Once I've crossed the bar, I ask, will the state's judicial officer give me her name or his name? Ask three times, and if no response, state, let the record show there is no state judicial officer present in the court. If they try to state you're in contempt of court, just remain silent, because there's no point in going to jail um, for contempt of court. You know, and if they continue on and you want to challenge them, you could say, I conditionally accept your statement based upon proof of claim of authority and jurisdiction. So you're not arguing with them. You're not challenging them. I mean, any more than, you know, you're asking them to prove their claim that they have the authority to put you in jail. You'll accept their position of authority if they prove that they have that. But they won't because it's very difficult for them to prove that they have any authority to do that. I am not arguing. I talk calmly and let the judge finish their statements before proceeding, but I am firm on my mission and bring everything written out on a piece of paper because I want to get certain points across and I need them written out so that I can go back to them. In fact, I once watched a lawyer in court doing this where he just, once he made his point, he would put a line through that point that he had made and move on to the next point. If he didn't get a chance to make the point after a couple of tries, 
he would move on to the next point.